Hey everyone, it's Leanne. Welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. Today's card was a digital card that I created. Most of it I drew. I also downloaded a digital stamp and did a lot of Copic coloring. So I'm just going to go over the process I did to create this card. So I downloaded the stamp originally and that consisted of the iguana and the text that you see on screen now. And so this was part of the Etsy listing. It was an instant digital download, so that meant I could work with my card right away, which was awesome. I put this into Procreate on my iPad Pro using an Apple Pencil, and I created the scene around these elements. I sort of had an idea of how I wanted to lay this out before I started based on the iguana that I seen. He's so cute. And just kind of the overall um, layout of this card just came to me based on looking on that. So I picked a brush in Procreate that matched the stroke on the iguana stamp, um, something that complemented it, and then created this scene around it. I did a fun border, and then I wanted him sitting kind of on a log or a branch, breaking the frame, and then some tropical leaves coming up behind him. So here it is all printed out. What I did is I printed this as a PNG file, or I exported a PNG file from Procreate and printed this um, at the A2 card size. So I did the original file in Procreate at the A2 card size and then I did put this into Adobe Illustrator to make sure that the size was correct and just printed it on a sheet of Nina Solar White cardstock for that Copic coloring. I also added an outline just so I could make sure that I trimmed it at the right size and I have that all cut down and now it's ready to color. So for this card, as I mentioned, I did a lot of Copic coloring and I really enjoyed working on this card. I had an idea in my mind of the color scheme that I wanted to use and it was really fun just to sit at my art desk and spend time going through all the markers that I have and looking at my color chart and picking some color schemes to use on this card and just purely coloring it. It was almost as though it was a coloring page for me, pretty much, and it was so much fun to work on. So I'm starting with the background first and I want to do a gradient and I really challenged myself with this because I picked colors that weren't in the same color family. So I picked something in the yellows, something in the oranges, in the reds, and normally if you want to do the easiest blend you can stick to the same family. If it's a yellow background I'd probably all pick something in the yellows, but I wanted to really kind of break the mold on this and, and push my boundaries. And so I did pick some different colors to put in the background. I find that it's easiest for me if I do put down dark or lighter colors first. I did start with a darker color here and it just seems a little bit harder to blend those colors as they get lighter. But it did work out. You just keep going back over it with the different markers that you're using and eventually I do find that the page just gets wet enough with the marker ink that they will bleed together nicely as long as they're not too far away from each other in saturation level or brightness. So now I'm coming in and doing the leaves. I don't know why I didn't color the iguana first. You would think that that would be the starting point, but I sort of knew exactly how I wanted the background to be, and then I was just going to build up to the iguana at the end. So I did all the plants sort of in a yellowy green as well. I just want them to be more in the background and blended with that background sky and not too much of a, of a of foreground element as I want the iguana to be. Now I'll put all of the colors that I use in the description below with links if you're interested in checking out any of those colors. Now with the leaves I did get the chance to use one of my new fluorescent Copics and I was really excited about this because when I did go to Japan last summer that was one of the color groups on my list that I wanted to make sure I picked up because I've never seen them in stores around here. I've never seen them available online anywhere I've shopped. I haven't looked too hard for them, but I have not seen them. And so there is uh, a group at the side of the color chart, if you do have the color chart, that has about six or eight colors that are fluorescents. And so I wanted to make sure I got them, although I didn't think I'd ever use them. I don't know. I just, I wanted to have them all, I guess. The like Copics are super addictive and if you have any you probably know um, how much it, craziness it is to j just want to fill your whole chart but I did want to pick these up and I was really excited that I found a use for one of the colors and it actually was the perfect shade to put on these leaves because it did have that bright greeny yellow and it just was of all the other markers I had it nothing came as close as this one did 
to just finding that color that I wanted. So it worked out really well and I was really excited to put it to use. So hopefully I will be able to find more uses for my other fluorescent colors coming up. So I had a lot of fun creating this overall. Just the scene, these leaves reminded me of a time I visited Costa Rica and in the rainforest they have, or I think it's the rainforest, they have these really big leaves. And I imagine that they're there to protect other vegetation and other um, elements in nature. They're really, really thick and heavy. And that's what these leaves reminded me of when I was drawing them. Um, they were so thick actually, we went to visit a volcano in Costa Rica and um, people had written notes on the leaves. The leaves were so thick that you could take um, a, a twig and and write in an inscription on the leaf and you could see it. And then as the leaf kind of rotted where the inscription was, it would show up really clear and the leaf was not damaged beyond that, but um, they lasted. You could see that ones had been there for a long time. So these big thick leaves, just that's what this reminded me of when I was creating it. So. Um, that was kind of a nice throwback too. It was um, really top of mind when I made these. So I'm just blending these in and doing simple coloring, just doing a lighter color at the base and extruding out from that, just going darker on the edges. This is a really simple way to do highlights and shadows, especially if you're not really good with form or you're not sure um, where to lay down highlights and shadows based on direction of the sun or that sort of thing. You just want something easy. It's really easy to start in the center of your object to make it light and then just go dark around the edges. That seems to be a good rule for most shapes. And then I'm just adding a little bit of a darker green behind the iguana to create the shadow and just separate him from the background leaves just a little bit more so that they're not blending too much together. So you can see as well the green that I used for the shadow is a little bit duller, a little bit darker, but still stays in that yellow green family. Now for this digital stamp overall, I did mention that I got this on Etsy. And so I really like um, finding stamps on Etsy. I find it's a good resource, especially if you're looking for something specific or you kind of have an idea of what you're looking for and you just know that you don't have that stamp available. And if, it's, if you're in a situation like me, we don't have a lot of stamps where I live. We don't have any real good craft stores for stamping. So everything I have to order online. And if I don't have time, I'm kind of pressed for time or um, I've left it to the last minute, sometimes that happens too. It's nice that I can go on Etsy and just find something there. There's a lot of resources and a lot of uh, digital stamps online. And it's really nice because you can download it and have it instantly. And it's also nice because you can resize those stamps. So my iguana, I wanted to use a little bit bigger. Whereas if I bought this as a rubber stamp set, I would be um, forced to use the size that it comes in, which is not terrible, but this way I had a little more flexibility with this. And I did have a lot of fun creating the scene with my card as well. And so even if you're not too super confident on drawing, you can still do some basic elements or even use um, supporting elements, um, simple shapes for a background, for instance. You don't have to do a scene um, with digital stamps. But it was really nice to have that flexibility. And I was able to kind of use my creative muscle a little bit on this and just have some fun with it. And I really had a lot of fun drawing these stamps. Now, I'm not particularly good at drawing characters. I always uh, seem to get them kind of weird. They just, they don't look the right shape. Um, or the right uh, overall form, but I did really enjoy creating the elements that went around this. And so there were other stamps in this um, stamp set as well that I purchased. There were some supporting element stamps. I just kind of did my own thing because I knew as soon as I seen that cute little iguana exactly what I wanted to do with the scene. So now I'm coloring him and I'm using more of a blue green tone just to elevate him a little bit from those leaves. I've got a green iguana and I've got green leaves. And so I don't want him to be trapped in the background or um, have to do a case where he's really light and the background's really dark to separate them. I really want him to pop. And so what I decided to do was instead of going to the warmer side of the greens like I did with the leaves, using a cool color of green and helping to bring him forward by using something contrasting by being an opposite with the with it being cool instead of warm. And then I'm really going to beef up his shadows as well and really make him pop three-dimensionally by giving him some really sharp shadows and in the darker blue-greens. 
So with the composition overall, I, want, I do want to talk about that for a minute. Um, so instead of just having everything contained in one single square, I thought about enclosing the background, but I really like the interest that breaking the frame brought to the overall image. So having the text bleed up off the top left and then having the little iguana sitting outside the frame in the bottom right really helped create some directional movement um, and lead towards the opening edge of the card. So I found that that really helped create a little bit of interest. I could have taken this further by maybe cutting out the iguana separately and putting him on foam tape and having him break the frame. That would have been another option. Originally, I did want to do a solid background around the edge. And I didn't do that because I found that with the text breaking the frame, I didn't have any clear definition to the, where the background ended and where the border started. And I didn't want to have my text running over any dark backgrounds, so I found it just worked better to leave the text floating over the white. And this is another reason why when I was coloring, I made my background at the top, the very background of the sky, really light so that it didn't take away too much from the text and that text could be really crisp and sharp and easy to read, really legible. Now to help complement my iguana, he's in these blue greens. I'm um, using blue as an accent color too. I don't know if iguanas have blue uh, accents. I'm sure there's some iguanas somewhere that do. They're kind of like frogs, I guess, and they have really unique colorings depending on their type or whatever. But I found that this really complemented him and helped kind of elevate him out from that scene again because he's in more cool colors and the background is more in warm colors. So I'm just getting him colored up and putting sharp shadows on his accents as well. And again, just doing the simple coloring with this, not anything complicated, just keeping him light and then working shadows in from his outer edges. And that does help uh, portray the form a little bit and makes him look more round and three dimensional. So he doesn't look too flat and I don't have to think too much about where the sun's shining and where the highlights and shadows should fall. This is just super cartoony and easy and simple. Now for the tree log too, this one's a little bit darker and that will help elevate my iguana just a little bit more from the scene. So this one I didn't put too much detail into uh, the shape. I had already drawn the lines for the wood, um, the little, um, the bark lines, I guess. And so I didn't do a lot of detail here, just some simple shading again, just shading underneath where the iguana is sitting and shading at the bottom of that shape. So it creates that round look. Super easy, super simple. And I also didn't want to make this too dark because I didn't want it to be so dark compared to all of the other elements in the scene. Also when I'm doing cartoon shapes, I do like to do hard edge shadows where I can. You have to be careful with it. I find that if it's um, done too much, then it just looks kind of weird but I like to put them in where I can so like underneath his little um, neck detail I did add some hard edge shadows and it just kind of I love that look I just love that cartoony look because this is such a cartoony and kiddish kind of fun card I found that it worked really well and I'm just going over that shadow again and that really helps him to pop off that log and really stand up in the scene And here I'm adding a bit of detail as well, just into the bark shapes, adding some sharp shadows on them as well. So now it's time to decorate the edge. And as I mentioned, I did want to do a background for this border, but I didn't want to make too much busyness behind the text, the message of the card. So I found it was better just to leave that border white and add some of the accent colors. And so I'm just using some of the colors used from the main part of the coloring just to bring in some of that balance and distribute some of those colors around, especially the spot colors on the iguana because he's got the, the cooler colors. This just helps to balance that a little bit more. And so I'm not sure if you noticed, I did a little trick there um, with the blue when I was coloring those triangles. I had some marker bleed outside the line and I find that if you just use a colorless blender and color up to the edge of that line from the outside of where you don't want your marker to be, it'll pretty much clean it up. Um, it's a little bit harder with darker colors, but it does work really great with light or medium tones. 
pretty much because it doesn't have any pigment in the ink of the colorless blender, it will pull out any color or pigment that it touches and kind of distributes it. It's like adding water to a pigment and it just washes it out a bit. So here's a look at the final coloring and this is pretty much all I'm doing for this card. I had so much fun coloring this card and it was so relaxing just to sit at my desk and play with my markers and just pick some colors out and I had a lot of fun with this. So now I'm going to tape this to a card back and I just want to make sure that I've got everything open on the right side. I'm not um, putting it on the wrong side, uh, the folded edge. And then I just lean that on the edge of my desk using the edges of my hands, lean it, lining it up. It's super simple that way. And so this background is a full A2 size card. So there's no edging or any trimming needed. So here's a look at the final coloring. I think this guy turned out super cute and I just love this stamp. I'm sure I will use it again and I will link it down below if you'd like to check it out and pick it up as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a bit of a different one, but I really did enjoy the Copic coloring and I wanted to show the whole process just so you could see all the shading and everything I did for coloring for this card. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you're notified as I post more videos to my channel. Thanks so much for watching.